Clear Linux. I've talked about this a little bit, and it's Intel's spin or Intel's creation in the Linux space. Now, I came out really harsh about it last time I talked about it, and I've since deleted that video because there were some factual inaccuracies that I talked about. And I did this last summer, so I thought, you know what? I saw this Pharonix article about it being literally one of the best in far as performance Linux distributions go, even better than Windows as far as performance goes. And I was like, that's very, very bold statement. And I tried it out and sure enough, it did perform very well, but I don't think I'm gonna use it as my daily driver because I did go over in a three and a half hour long stream. So if you wanna check that out, I'll leave the link below to my stream archives. You can check it out. Uh, the entire install process and me kind of fumbling around getting everything going. But for this video, let's go into all the little nuances and things I ran into when it came to Clear Linux and why I say it's not necessarily a good daily driver yet, but it definitely has some potential. Before we get into the video, I do live stream over on Twitch both Monday and Friday. Uh, so if you'd like to ask a question, head over there, ask me live, or you can check out all the archives of all my past streams over on Chris Titus Tech Streams. The links are in the description. So with that, let's get into our video. So let's first go over the requirements for Clear Linux. Um, it's kind of an interesting one. You don't see a lot of YouTube content on it because it's very difficult to get going in a virtual machine. I tried to do it through stock settings and it pretty much just didn't play. I really had to uh, dive in and change like uh, the kernel that was being used and those types of things or the actual processor, the hypervisor was being used to get it to even function. Um, however, doing this, I was like, Egh. so that's why you don't see very many videos about it on YouTube because for the most part, a lot of people need to actually put it on physical hardware to actually get the most from it or at least to try it. Now, you can obviously get it going in a VM like I talked about, but I just want to say that's why you don't see much content on YouTube about it because it's uh, beyond a lot of people's abilities to actually cover the actual subject matter without an easy way to install it in a VM. Not that you can't do it, but it is a little bit more than just hitting install. Second, the requirements for Clear Linux are kind of a pain. First off, it can only be installed via UEFI. It will not do a legacy install. Second, it does require newer hardware. Um, it uses something like uh, the, the streaming extensions from Intel. AMD also has these, so you can actually install this on an AMD chip. That entire live stream was done on an AMD 2700 uh, chip, so that's an eight core, 16 thread CPU, so actually a pretty beefy CPU, uh, and it performed very, very well with that CPU. Uh, surprisingly well, actually. Even though this is an Intel distribution, I would say it performed uh, e even better than Arch that I have installed and using on this main machine right now. So the requirements are the second kind of drawback to clear Linux. But with all that said, what did I actually think of the install process once I did UEFI, once I put it on hardware and once I actually installed it? And I got to say, interesting, very interesting. First off, it doesn't use Grub at all. And it, I was multi-booting in the stream. So for about the first hour of that stream, it was me going, well, I installed it, but it's not booting. It's not going to here. Let me try and push it through the UEFI and, and boot directly to it and finally getting it up and going. But I wanted to use Grub to boot to it. And it ended up going through an actual article on the Clear Linux forums and finding that you could add it uh, a custom entry in Grub and do it manually, which I did during the stream. So if you're interested in that, definitely uh, look at that section of the stream. But um adding that thing, booting into it finally, it worked great. But the downside to this was it used is system D to boot. It didn't use Grub. That system D bootloader did take over my system, meaning when I went to reset and reboot, instead of going directly to the Grub, even though I've installed that menu entry, after doing an update in Clear Linux, it just went ahead and overwrote or, or I basically overrode the actual default settings to use my stock uh, system here and actually boot directly into clear Linux. So I was like, ugh, this reminds me of Windows 10. <laughs> not not that it is. I'm mean, just saying it uses a different type of bootloader and, and you should be cognizant of that system D boot uh, compared to uh, the boot from Grub. So 
when it comes to distributions, the next big thing that I noticed was simply that uh, it did use a different package manager. And I'm talking drastically different package manager. There's a lot of new things that Clear Linux did, and it's really kind of impressive. Uh, now, you always hear me say distributions don't matter, and fundamentally everything's the same. And this is true in this way, uh, the theory, the fundamentals theory really holds up, but Clear Linux does a lot of things completely different than pretty much every other distribution on the market that I've seen. Uh, you know, I, I've jumped from Arch, RHEL, uh, Debian-based systems, all these different types of Linux spins, but this is probably the most unique because of the package manager and its utilization of System D, which it does heavy, heavy utilization of. Things that I didn't even know System D did, it had doing. So it was really interesting. One good example of this during the stream, I was like, okay, I want to mount all my other drives and I want them to mount automatically. How do I do this? And lo and behold, System D has an option to auto populate F stab and boot automatically when no F stab even exists. And I was like, wow, that's a cool feature, I guess. But I was just kind of taken aback by it auto-populating everything it needed on the fly and just booting into the system without ever generating an f-stab, which uh, f-stabs used for mounting. So I was like, okay, well, interesting. So I just went ahead and took a brand new file, a brand new f-stab file in the etc directory, tossed in some entries, and sure enough, it mounted my two extra drives and I was able to like load my Steam library and other things in my actual Clear Linux uh, instance. So kind of cool, but weird because I didn't understand that it did that. And getting back to the package manager, which was SWUPD, um, this one was really kind of cool because it, it functions a lot like DNF or uh, uh, Fedora's package manager because it does just the difference in a lot of packages. So when you're updating your system, you know, when you update a Debian system or you update an Arch system, it does take a long time. <laughs> especially when you actually compare it to uh, Fedora. And if you can compare Fedora to Clear Linux, it's just amazing the difference. We're talking the entire system updated in, in I don't, I think it did it under a minute. I mean, it, it was really, really fast. It was the fastest by far of any Linux distribution, but it was doing that with SWUPD. Also, uh, it does do automatic updates, which you can disable but by default, you can just enable auto updates and it just automatically updates your system. So uh, I yeah, just eesh, I, I, I want to like that feature, but it just Microsoft has completely ruined auto updating. <laughs> I mean, anytime I hear auto updates, I'm like, ah, PTSD, Windows 10 flashbacks. And um, I, I need to I need to just take that bias out of my head and take a look at Clear Linux and Ubuntu and their auto update features because this could be a really good thing, especially because in Linux, a lot of times you don't need to reboot and it's not intrusive in the update cycle. So it's not the same thing. So it's unfair of me to judge Clear Linux in this respect. And I should sing praises about auto updates, but since I haven't used it as a daily driver and I haven't seen the auto updates fire off and I haven't been using it for an extended period of time, I can't tell you one way or another. So I'm just going to say this is an option. It's there. You can disable it or you can kind of leave it enabled. For my stream video, I went ahead and left it enabled. Didn't obviously cause any problems in the three hours that we were in Clear Linux. And then number two is telemetry. Now, I, in my past video, I was like, ah, oh, telemetry, it's on by default. Intel's out to get your stuff. And uh, that's a little more sensationalized. One of the reasons why I deleted that video was because I felt like that was factually inaccurate, it, especially when I looked at the launcher. And today I looked at it and right there, plain as day, it says telemetry at the very bottom of your install. So when you're going through that install, it says telemetry, you click on it. You say, hey, do you want to send diagnostic data to Intel? Or you don't. You just say disable, and that's it. Now, this service, I think, still runs in the background, but it doesn't send the data, so it still collects the data. Um, I, I Not 100% on that, but when I checked on it back a year ago, that was my main gripe 
Um, I know this can be disabled as well. So you can actually go in and, and uninstall the entire service if you're real paranoid about it. So I'm not going to come too down on that because they put it in there very clear and uh, <laughs> clear, clear Linux. Yeah. But anyways, that was kind of it. And as far as packages go, the really, really big packages were pretty much here. However, when I went to mod out ZSH in that uh, live stream, all my ZSH packages that I was using, uh, oh my gosh, ZSH and, and ZSH auto suggestions and other things that are both Debian and Arch repos just simply weren't there. A lot of more obscure packages I was looking for weren't there. Um, and this is very common, especially when you have these you know, one-off distributions. That's why I don't really cover distributions on the channel because I'm like, eh, it doesn't have the packages. That's why I always tell people Debian or Arch, choose one if you're using it for a desktop because you're going to want all the packages everyone's using and both Debian and Arch or the derivatives of both those have them. And that's why I'm like, choose one and then pick your flavor of desktop environment and off you go into the sunset. So at the end of the three hours, basically, it was me just saying, clear Linux, you don't have the packages I want. Yes, I can build from source. Yes, I can grab scripts. Yes, I can do all this. But uh, if I'm going to do that, I might as well be on Gen 2 or Linux from scratch or whatever, you know, pick your poison Slackware and just build it my own. Yes, you can build that because Linux is Linux and you can get the packages there but the ease of use is really what I'm looking forward. And, and it just simply doesn't have it. It's a very, very young operating system, or I say operating system, distribution, and uh, it its packages are limited. And as such, it's just not something I could recommend. Fun to try out, fun to mess with, and there's something with it I really hope uh, Debian and Arch kind of look at some of these and integrate some of these optimizations so they can take the performance of Clear Linux and boost their own performance. But at the end of the day, Clear Linux, uh, it's just another obscure distribution. It's out there. It has some performance tweaks. I think there's things we can glean from it. And at the end of the day, I don't view it as a candidate for a daily driver. Uh, that's why I usually just say Debian or Arch, uh, because I want the packages. I want the ease of use. And if I'm going to, you know, hassle myself and build it all myself, uh, I don't think I'd want to be using an Intel product for that, but maybe you do. And if you do, there's nothing wrong with clear Linux. Try it out. I did. It was a fun experiment, a fun trial, um, and for the most basic user out there, I think it would be just fine as it was very fast, very snappy. And I did like the updates uh, as far as how snappy and, and solid they were. I didn't have any issues uh, other than once I learned kind of its structure and how it worked on the front end, which was weird <laughs> to say the least. But overall, a good distribution. I'm not going to tear it down. I'm not going to say it's the devil, I think. is Was that my original title? I, I think that was my original title. Uh, anywho, with that, let me know your comments down in the comments section. As always, thank you to all my patrons. Without you, I couldn't make videos like this one. And I'll see you in the next one.